Last night, we aired for you the first part of our interview with the sports minister, Pascal Senange. We talked about her decision to cheer Team Canada from home instead of traveling to Qatar for the World Cup. Now, Qatar helped Canada evacuate people with ties to this country after the fall of Kabul and Afghanistan. But Qatar has also come under fire for its treatment of the 2S LGBTQ community and foreign laborers. In the second part of our interview, the minister and I talked about discrimination here at home and the scandal in Hockey Canada that led to the resignation of that body's board of directors. And when it comes to challenges, of course, Canada has its own. And, you know, you, we mentioned LGBTQ rights. I'm thinking uh, homophobia in this country. Uh, and, and there was a new report out, and this was last week, from Hockey Canada. And based on their own survey, players under the age of 18 in the 13 affiliated uh, leagues with Hockey Canada, uh, that age group was the most likely to discriminate on the ice and the most likely... Uh, insults, discrimination, were in the form of homophobia, uh, transphobic slurs. Does that make you despair or worry about the future of hockey in this country? It makes me worried about the state it's in right now. Uh, but the fact that Hockey Canada now has this data, uh, that we know more about what's happening on the ice, you know, there's always been um, speculation about the discrimination happening in toxic culture in hockey, but to have that type of data for the first time and know that those incidents happen so regularly and particularly in that age group, uh, it also, I think it's gonna help build a stronger plan to address those issues and uh, better educate young players um, and, and uh, prevent those situations from happening. And uh, I really hope to see a lot of changes at the board of Hockey Canada with more diversity so that it, it can trickle down all the way through the organization and have specific pro programs to address those issues. It's about sustainability of sport also. Canada is a super diverse country uh, and uh, if sport organize, organizations want to be relevant and appeal to kids and parents now and in the future, they need to make those changes and, and change the culture within sport, and especially hockey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, of course, there was the revelation over the summer that Hockey Canada yeah. had, uh, rather than investigate uh, allegations of sexual assault, they, they paid off uh, the victims who stepped forward in order to, to buy their silence. You, the, the board resigned. You had called for the resignation of the board. Uh, you talk a little bit about a trickle-down effect. Is the resignation of a board enough to trigger that kind of change? No, it's not enough, uh, but it sends a signal uh, that uh, it's no longer acceptable, uh, that the status quo is not accepted uh, by society, by players themselves, by parents, uh, by the Directors parents that pays the fees also, because we, uh, we heard a, a really big response from sponsors, but also parents and, and uh, affiliated organizations so, uh, but then we need to see new people uh, around the table uh, with diverse backgrounds and diverse expertise, especially in governance, because so many problems were happening right at the top of the organization, how they managed those cases, um, how they treated sexual abuse as an insurance policy instead of uh, really fighting against that culture of sex, sexual violence and, and the culture of silence. So. Um, I think that something has begun, uh, mm -hmm. but we need to pay close attention and make sure that it does happen and that it's not just a once, once uh, event, that it, that it continues in the future. How would it continue though? Because you know, when you, you talk about sexual assault, yeah. and rather than listening to and investigating incidents of, of, al of these allegations, they lean on misogyny and try to buy people's silence. So how do you change that? What are you looking for when you say that it can't be a one-time event? What would indicate to you that it's greater than this one-time event? Well, um, there's different things. Uh, first of all, it was really important for us to have Hockey Canada sign with the Office of the Sport Integrity Commissioner so that independent investigations no longer are in the hands of the organization itself, but that there's an independent uh, mechanism in place to investigate cases of, of abuse, maltreatment, sexual abuse. Of course, sexual abuse is uh, always going to be a, a criminal 
offense. Uh, so, and like we saw in about the allegations in 2003 and 2018, the local police have reopened their own investigations, and that's the right place to turn to when uh, when situations of uh, sexual uh, violence happens. But with the sports system, we need to have uh, investigations about how those cases are managed, have the management taken the right steps to prevent these things from happening, and when they do, have they done the right thing by making sure that those that perpetrate criminal offense are responsible and are accountable for their own action, and that was the problem at Hockey Canada. Um, so that was the first step, signing with the Office of the Sport Integrity Commissioner. What we're working on right now, and that's not just for Hockey Canada, but all sport organization, is we're going to bring in some new uh, governance uh, expectations uh, so that there is more diversity around the table, so that uh, the governance uh, practices are better and, and conform with the norm and what should be happening at, on every board, and to have more financial transparency and education and prevention. Uh, so I, you know, my goal as Minister of Sport is to bring in all the leadership I can to make sure that collectively everyone involved in the sport system, whether it's the organizations themselves, uh, my counterparts in the provinces and territories that are responsible for community and provincial sport, that all of us do what is needed to uh, prevent abuse and maltreatment in sport. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been the Minister of Sport uh, for, for about a year. Uh, it's been quite the year that you've had to deal with a number of different issues. I, I think you alluded to it in part, but what do you hope your impact will be? At the end of the day, as the minister with this portfolio, what do you hope your impact will be? I want to empower athletes um, because there's a lot of power imbalance in the sports system. Uh, athletes' career depend on their coaches, on their organizations. So they need to have a stronger voice and more power um, to counterbalance that uh, that that reality, and uh, so that they feel safe in speaking out, uh, so that uh, they feel like they have a place at the decision table as well, uh, because it's about them anyways, uh, and to make sure that all organizations and everyone involved in the sports system knows and understand that we're doing this for the athletes, and to make sure that they have you know everything they need to perform and and be who they are and also uh, that they're safe and that they come out of the sports system as a healthy and, and wholesome human being. Pascal Sainange, thank you very much for the time. Thank you.